Hi, hello, buongiorno. My name is Annabelle from Annabelle Men's Antics, and about two years ago, I made this dress just here. Now, this dress kickstarted a whole collaboration with a bunch of us costumers here on YouTube. Essentially, we were all using this pattern, which I found in a charity shop. It is originally from the 1960s and has several dress options, meaning that the outfit is easy to customize and meaning that we can pass this around, posting it from country to country, place to place, and all creating our own unique designs. There is an entire playlist if you guys wanted to check out everyone else's creations, but my dress right here was the very first. It was made out of curtains from my old office and I loved it. Honestly, it has been one of my most worn pieces in my day-to-day -day wardrobe as well as being a nice little history bounding piece. However, when me and Ben moved to Australia, I had to make some choices about what clothing I was bringing and what I was leaving behind. Though I've worn this dress from everything to days out with friends to actually going to work and it did initially make it into my suitcase, at the end of the day, it had to be cut out. I just simply didn't have the room and other things like ongoing projects had to take priority. But since getting to Australia, it's one of the clothing pieces that I've been missing the most. And when I had the pattern in my possession and I did my initial dress, I actually took photos of the pattern pieces and made a digital copy. It was kind of rough to be honest, the pattern didn't fit me great, but I think that now is a good time to revisit it and remake it because the other day I was going around a charity shop and found this amazing boat fabric, which tell me this isn't perfect to make this dress with because I 110% believe it is, meaning that it is time that I bring out this digital pattern that I made years ago and get creating a brand new dress. Also guys, this pattern as a single size is going to be available for free on my Ko-Fi, link is in the description down below, or if you want it graded into different sizes, that is actually this month's free pattern on Patreon, or you can buy it off my Ko-Fi shop. But now it's time for me to make mine. With the original dress, there was a few things that I wasn't quite happy with, and a few things we're going to have to change due to various limitations. The first change I'm making is that the skirt is going to be half the length of the original, meaning that the gathers won't be quite as thick, and it's not going to have quite as much swoosh, but this is simply because I got this fabric from a charity shop, and I am going to be using what I have, and what I have is only half the fabric that I used originally. Also, because it's going to be one continuous length, I'm not going to be sewing three separate pieces together, which is what the original pattern called for. Likewise, the skirt is going to be shorter lengthwise overall as well, again, because we're using what fabric we've got. And the top of the skirt is also going to be cut on a slight diagonal, making the front slightly shorter than the back. But when I'm wearing it, because my bum is quite round and sticks out, this means that it's actually going to look level, which I think will be a very good effect. Next, the darts on a bodice are going to be placed slightly further apart. This will help round out the boob and give it less of a bullet bra shape, meaning that I don't have to wear a padded bra with it every time I wear it, which means that I'll probably get to wear it a hell of a lot more, especially because I had to wear a padded bra with it was my main complaint about my last dress. We are also not going to be lining this dress, and this is simply because Australia is a hell of a lot hotter than the UK, meaning that with the lining and, to be fair, the slightly thicker cotton fabric that I used for my original dress, it would probably be more of winter wear just here, whereas my goal with this dress is to actually have something that I can wear in summer, down to the beach, going for walks, something that's light, flowy, and I'm not going to get too sweaty in. And lastly, same as I did my original dress, I'm going to be dropping that neckline quite a bit compared to the original pattern because I don't like being strangled by my clothes and it is damn uncomfortable to have that right there throttling you constantly. Yes, no, we're not doing that this time. So I began by ironing the fabric before getting out my back and front bodice blocks that I made ages ago and tracing it onto a new piece of paper. I then added some seam allowance and cut them out before adjusting the dart placements to match the original dress. This way it should fit me perfectly. So I thought I'd just quickly explain to you guys what I'm doing with these patterns. So the lines on my basic block are not the lines that are on the traveling pattern dress. So these blue lines, that's the original lines from basic block, and these orange lines are where I have cut up. So I've taped this together and then cut this up to create the traveling pattern bodice. I still need to do that with the back, so you can see this is the original dart, and actually what we want to do is put a nice long dart in the back, which is how it was on the original dress. And once those alterations are made, we can get cutting out just fine. I then put on the pattern pieces and cut them from the fabric, cutting them as close to the top as possible. The leftover bottom of the fabric was then cut at the top to be used as a skirt before any scraps were turned into bias binding. The bodice darts were pinned in place and I tried it on to make sure it fit. To be fair, I have so little fabric to work with here, a mock-up would probably have been a good idea, but meh, sometimes you just have to live life on the edge, I suppose. With that, we were onto the sewing machine to get those darts stitched up. Then we were onto the shoulders and the side seams of the bodice, which were also pinned and stitched together. And with that, it is time to try this baby on. Okay, this is the moment of truth, and I think this fits. I actually think this fits really well. Much like my other traveling pattern dress, I'm gonna be wearing this with a belt, so if it's a little bit loose around the waist, I'm not overly fussed. But the darts came out really, really well. I was a little bit nervous, 
was that if I fucked this up, it would come out really, really badly. And I did have to redo some of the markings. So there is some pencil marks. I'm gonna have to put it through the washing machine before the grand reveal because I can't do a reveal with all these pencil markings on it. But it looks good. It looks good. I really, really like it. It's a much lighter weight than the curtains that I made my other dress out of. So I think this is going to be perfect for a nice Australian summer dress. <laughs> So excited. And now to sew the rest of it. All of the raw inside seams were then overlocked to keep everything nice and neat and tidy and to make this dress last a bit longer and not wear out so quickly. A gathering stitch was then run along the top edge of the skirt before I ruffled it down to the waistband, leaving the back seam flat a few centimeters either side so that the zip would be easier to attach. The skirt was then stitched on. I really do love this fabric, but another half meter to a meter of it would have been absolutely perfect as the skirt is a lot less roughly than I really wanted it to be, but you've got to work with what you've got and I'm pretty happy that there's no wasted fabric here. I then pinned on the zip and checked I would be able to take the dress on and off as I wasn't 100% sure if it was long enough. But though I won't be stepping into this one anytime soon, it's easy enough to put on over my head, so I am happy as Larry. With that, we attached the zip using the zipper foot on my sewing machine and trying out a new technique where it essentially gets sewn like any other seam. And honestly, yes, it was visible, but it was also super easy and worked, so I will be keeping that one to use again in my back pocket. The bottom portion of the skirt was then stitched up before raw edges were once again overlocked. With that all done, the base of the skirt needed to be hemmed. Now, technically, this is a salvage edge. However, I wanted to roll the hem to make it a bit more durable to wear and tear, as I am predicting this to be one of my new favorite dresses over the coming summer. And I say coming summer, guys, because I am in Australia, meaning that while you're all enjoying the lovely sunshine, it is cold as anything over here, so I have to wait until November for it to get warm. So I started making this dress at approximately one o'clock in the afternoon. It's currently 10 o'clock at night, and I have one bit of machine sewing left, which means we're gonna get it done today, so yay. However, we're not getting it done if someone doesn't vacate my chair. Don't give me that look, you know you need to move. Then the last thing to do was the bias binding around the neck and armholes. This was pinned and stitched down before I rolled it over by hand and stitched it to the inside, keeping everything nice and tidy. A last minute adjustment though was the addition of a hook and eye at the back of the neck, just to help the zip from pulling apart and sliding down, as this was actually a problem that I'd had with my last dress just a little bit. And with that, it got thrown into the wash to get rid of those damn pencil lines before it was then hung up to dry. And then because it was wrinkled as all hell, I decided to try using my iron as a steamer while it was on my dressmaker's dummy and success! I can't actually believe that worked. At last it was time for the grand reveal and boy oh boy I have been saving this location just for this boathouse dress. So this dress, long story short, I love it. Honestly, I've been really, really missing my other traveling pattern dress. It is a little bit thick and heavy for Australia, so it would be more of a winter wear rather than summer wear. But this, this is perfect for summer. <laughs> Not to mention, can we just appreciate how good the boathouse location is? I will definitely be going there for photo shoots in the future and it just matched this outfit perfectly. So, mwah. So things I'm really happy about with this dress is that the hem looks really, really good. I was worried that it was gonna look a bit wonky because obviously I cut the top at an angle, so the front was slightly shorter than the back. However, this has actually worked out perfectly. If I'm not wearing a belt, you can see at the waistline that it is cut on an angle. However, if I do wear a belt with it, it's completely unnoticeable. And I don't know whether or not I'm gonna wear a belt with this one. I normally would, but I kind of feel like for once, this is a dress that looks better without it. Crazy for me, I know. Now, the other thing is that this dress was definitely not made for me to wear a padded bra with. For my other dress, I always have to wear a padded bra with it because it was made for the bullet bras of the 1960s. This one, I intentionally gave a more rounded shape However, the only bra I can wear with this at the moment is white because I tried putting on my dark blue bra under this and it was horribly visible. My only white bra is also padded, meaning that the chest does appear a little bit tight. But honestly, even if it's a bit tight, it is still comfy to wear, so overall, no complaints. With the skirt as well, I definitely put a few too many gathers towards the front. I feel like I should have evened them out around the back a little bit more. However, it looks really nice. The zip is easy to do and undo, and the hook and eye at the top means that the zip isn't gonna fall down, which I sometimes have a slight problem with my other dress 
dress for this, so that is good. So yes, this dress is going in my everyday wardrobe. It gets 10 out of 10. And if you want to make your own, I have a free download of this pattern in my size on my Ko-Fi, or it is this month's paid pattern on Patreon in graded sizes. The paid pattern is also available on my Ko-Fi, but it does cost five pound. Yes, my Ko-Fi is still in pound rather than dollars, even though I'm living in Australia, because that's an issue for another day, to be honest. <laughs> so if you want to make this yourself, you can either get the graded version, which is paid, or the one size, which is free. Either way, I would highly encourage you to make it, and I would encourage you to check out everyone else's videos in the playlist. This collaboration is still going on after two years. I am so, so excited. I have another three people lined up who are going to be doing videos with this pattern this year, and I just love that I've been able to put this together and that it is still going. At this point, I am also going to let you guys in on a little secret. I'm really hoping this carries on for five years. If it does, life goal achieved. So make sure you check out the playlist, guys, and if you enjoyed this video, remember to like it. Subscribe for more sewing, vintage sewing machine, and cosplay content. I post every single Wednesday, and until next time, guys, have a beautiful day, and remember, make your next adventure. Bye! And a massive thank you to my Patreons, Ganny Medrose and Kelly Nelson. Without your support, these videos wouldn't be possible, guys. And if you too want to join the Patreon community, get free graded sewing patterns and early access to all of my videos, the link is in the description down below.